Hello Hunters, welcome back to Autobot Dawson Gaming and today I'm extremely excited um, to be able to speak with Amelia Gotham, the amazing voice actress for Mifa from not only Breath of the Wild, um, an amazing Zelda game, but also Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity. So Amelia, can you start by just telling us a little bit about yourself? Hi, um, yeah, my name's Amelia Gotham. I'm a voice actor and a theatrical actress. Um, I was in the Zelda series Breath of the Wild and Age of Calamity, as well as a few other video games of note. Um, yeah, what do you want to know? <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. So uh, what other video games were you in? Uh, well, I think my first one was a Disneyland Connect game, and then I've done a lot of uh, player character roles. I was in Let It Die. Uh, which was great. That was with uh, Tracy Lords, Mark Hamill was in that one. I oh, believe. wow. Um, I've done Steel Battalion. I did two Final Fantasies. A lot of other, like, minor, more minor uh, games for mobile. Um, some audiobooks, stuff like that. Well, that's awesome. That's awesome. I, I didn't know that you were in a, in a game with Mark Hamill. That's amazing. <laughs> um, so, uh, what, if any, aspects of your own personality were you able to bring to the Mifa character in, in Breath of the Wild? Mm. Well, I definitely believe that any actor has to take parts of their own personality and situations from their own life and use it to create a very real, viable character. Um, for me, what what I identified the most uh, with, with Mifa, was um, the fact that she was such a, a feminine and maybe slightly shy character, but at the same time, she could also, she was also a warrior. And what I loved, and I've said this in other interviews as well, is that she found a balance between her feminine side and her masculine. Like, she didn't have to choose between one or the other absolutely and that's very different than the way that i you know i grew up um which you know i guess a long time now um i grew up in a world where it felt like you had to choose like you either had to be a tomboy or a girly girl and um i just love that there's a character out there like her that fuses the two together so that girls know they don't have to choose that's amazing. I, I love that. that. That's definitely great to hear. And that definitely comes across with Mifa e extremely well. So you did a great job showing us that. Um, Thank you. No problem. Um, so, you know, we listed some of those other roles, but specifically with Zelda, what is it like knowing that, like, you know, for the rest of time, you're forever going to be part of, I mean, really the most highly praised video game since I've been alive uh, of our generation <laughs> And, and also, you know, the I'll just say probably the most critically acclaimed franchise of all time. I mean, Zelda almost never misses uh, in terms of critic, critic scores and everything like that. So does it feel awesome to be part of such an iconic franchise? Oh, yeah, absolutely. You know, um, I'm not a gamer myself. Like, I know that I did play Zelda when I was a kid, and I knew what it was. But... Um, I don't think that any of us fully understood what we were doing while we were doing it. Um, and it's only in the aftermath with learning through different fans of the game that you realize the impact that it's had. And that feels, um, that feels amazing to know that, um, that I was a part of that. And also to know that I, I really did put my heart and soul into that character. And um, I really wanted it to be good, especially the second game. Um, because that, you know, first game, you're, you're kind of feeling it out. Uh, there's also a different director, like, not sure what's going on as much as the second game. And the second game was really where I just, I really dialed into Mipha and uh, made her, like, a fully real, um, real human being to, to me and tried my best to make her come alive. Absolutely. Well, she does get fleshed out so well in Age of Calamity, and and that is a, a fantastic, uh, fantastic Zelda spinoff that 
I'm definitely happy that we have that one as well. Um, and for all the champions, like for you and Daruk and Rivali and Urbosa, uh, everybody got so much ad- additional character development in that game. So I'm definitely glad that Nintendo decided to uh, put that one out as well. Um, I mean, yeah, Breath of the Wild is like, it's genuinely debated as potentially the best game ever made. So that's that's so awesome that you get to be a part of that forever. Um, yeah. I mean, um, also, uh, this is this is a, a question worth mentioning. Um, on the topic of sort of working with, um, you know, two different directors and everything, w- what was it like actually working with uh, Nintendo on the game? I mean, were they very revealing on, like, information about the character beforehand? How much of it did you have to sort of feel out and, and that kind of thing? Uh, for sure. Um, so... With all video games, not just Nintendo, but with any video game company, they are um, very protective of information getting out. And I I, I honestly, my opinion is that it's because they really get one shot, right? It's not like a movie where there's like a bunch of buildup and you get to see who's in it and stuff. It's like they they really get one shot to launch it. And they just want to make sure it's the best for the fans, that it's like the most... um, that the fans are going to have that experience of surprise. And and um, so it, they definitely are very protective. There are NDAs that are signed. Um, we did not know what we were auditioning for when we were auditioning for it. Oh, wow. Um, all the characters had different names. The project had a different name. You know, we didn't know what it was until we were cast. Interesting. Um, they're protective of the, the sides, the materials that you're given. Um, you're given them um, either like a, a day before or at the time when you're going to record, you know, and the materials you don't take with you or anything. And it's just, it's all just very important that they make sure um, to protect the material from getting leaked, you know, because they want to do it in their own way, which is, you know, the best way possible and they do that because they love the fans so much and want to give them the best experience of course yeah that that definitely makes sense um so when you were actually um you know voicing for the game of course link is uh you know notoriously silent character and you have so many uh great scenes with him where that emotion between the two that connection is still felt um i think yourself and also um zelda were really the two characters that had that connection with Link the strongest throughout the game, throughout both games. Uh, and so what was sort of your strategy for having emotional dialogue with a character who can't speak back to you at all? Um, I would say that, that there is a backstory. You know, I had a, a backstory of what the relationship was with between Mifa and Link. You know, um, there are acting techniques namely substitution where you can take parts of your own life and sort of use what you were feeling in your own life and spin it to, to be to fit um, the circumstances of what the character is going through. So I already had like written um, the relationship that Link and I had that wasn't even part of the, the actual script. Oh, wow. So, um, yeah, and I think the animation is so great at conveying the looks between the two that there's a lot said that doesn't need to be actually vocalized. I think that the audience understands the relationship and doesn't need um, too much explanation. Definitely. I mean, this was the first time that we even, you know, of course we've always known Link as Link, but in previous Zelda games, like, you know, you can type in your own player name and all that. This was the first time that he sort of had his own, um, you know, like, well, the other characters actually call him Link, and, uh, you know, it's actually his own independent character and not just representing the player. So I definitely think it turned out great, um, especially considering it was Nintendo's first shot at, like, actually having... Uh, voice lines in the game, which was another question I had for you. Um, you know, this is the first time that Zelda ever had fully voiced lines uh, in in the franchise. So, how exactly did uh, I mean? Did Nintendo approach that with maybe 
hiring someone who is already experienced to direct you guys or were they I mean how like you said earlier about them being protective were they just very cautious about the fact that you know characters like Zelda had never even spoken before uh, with actual dialogue what was that like being the first you know a part of the first game with with actual vocals um so Yes, our director is very experienced, both directors. Um, Jamie Mortolaro was the first director for Breath of the Wild, and he's he's highly, highly experienced and sought-after voiceover director. Okay. Um, if you just look up his IMDb, it's, it's very long. Um, and he was also the voice of Sidon as well. Oh, awesome. Um, but as far as Nintendo... Um, like you're asking, like, what does it feel like to be the first voice, voiced Zelda? Yeah, yeah, you know, the first game that actually had the the dialogue in there. So, I think Nintendo was very smart about the way they went about it, um, because they understood the fragility of it. You know, there are fans that have been fans for a very long time, and they're going to have certain expectations. And, I mean, we all did our very best, but we also went into it knowing we weren't going to please every single person. Right. Right? Someone's always going to find some fault. But we wanted to really bring to life the vision that Nintendo had very carefully, um, you know, put forth in front of us to do. And uh, we all are trained professionals and just approached it um, like we would any other professional job of just you know really following the director following the guidelines and um utilizing like our technical talent to be able to bring those characters to life and then it's just kind of sending it out there and hoping hoping for the best right knowing that we're not going to please everybody but trying to at least uh do the game justice do the script and the characters justice and um, also, you know, do ourselves justice as actors. Well, you definitely achieved that because, you know, I, I've played every Zelda game that that exists. And um, when I first picked up Breath of the Wild, it, it even though it was at first I was like, oh, my gosh, there's, you know, the game starts with, with Zelda, you know, talking, talking to you. Um, and it's so jarring at first, but very quickly it feels natural. And I think the whole cast... Um, did a great job of, of really making it feel natural. Like, even though it was something we hadn't experienced before, it still fit right into the world of Hyrule, like, perfectly. And now I can't imagine Zelda without it. <laughs> so I hope it continues going forward. Um, yeah, I, I do think that they made a smart choice not to give Link a voice. Yeah, yeah. He's the only one that doesn't. And, I, and that was definitely, um, you know... That was a decision that that was planned. You know, they they didn't. I don't. I'm I'm just kind of like speculating because I'm not Nintendo, but I just feel like that was the one character that they felt um, should remain silent with good reason. Oh yeah, so, I think everybody's probably got a different idea in their head of what he sounds like. So you're just gonna make everyone angry <laughs> one way or another. Maybe, yeah, <laughs> possibly. Well, um, so sort of um, going away from Zelda, I know this is probably a question you get a lot, but even if it's not video game related, what what would be like your number one, you know, sort of off the top of your mind project, whether it be a movie or show or game or whatever, that you would like really want to be a part of, like a certain film or a certain franchise, anything like that come to mind? Um, I think since I was a little kid, I've always wanted to play Wonder Woman. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Um, you know, if circumstances ever aligned or whatever, but some kind of action hero that I've always wanted to be like an action star since I was a kid. Um, voiceover was something that was just very pleasantly put in front of me, but it wasn't something that I was actively pursuing. It is now, like it's it's that's changed, but I really um I really wasn't like moving to LA to be a voiceover actor. I was trying to do uh, more like action movies or uh, theater because that's what I'm tr I'm trained in theater. 
Okay. And voiceover, just the opportunities presented themselves. And so I kind of went that direction and then fell in love with it. Um, but yeah, so originally I was, I wasn't like seeking, um, voiceover. Well, I, I love DC and the Justice League, so you would be a killer Wonder Woman. I mean, I've seen some of your uh, your stuff on your page with the dancing and everything. You're super athletic, so it would be awesome to, to see that one day. <laughs> yeah, maybe someday. We'll see. <laughs> yeah, you never know. You know those heroes are getting recast all the time. So, <laughs> um, so um, is there anything, you know, sort of before we let you go here, is there anything that you want to say to, you know, to Zelda fans that may be watching the video, like just anything that you want them to know, whether it just be, you know, sort of whatever's on your mind when it comes to looking back at the game several years later now. Um, I'm just so, so happy and, and grateful that I got to be a part of this. And uh, the fans have been just unbelievably amazing. They're, they're just such good people and they, they love this game for all the right reasons and um, you know I just I guess I just want them to know like we, we put our heart and soul into it we we had you guys in mind we had the fans in mind throughout the whole pro- the whole process you know just really trying to um, make it an amazing experience for the fans so they were always at the forefront of every decision um, when it came to this game and you know all the, the all the work that everybody who was a part of it they always had the fans uh you know needs and wants put first so and i love them all they're just so awesome i've met some incredibly amazing people um by doing this game so i'm just really grateful well that that's amazing to hear we we definitely hope to hear more from you in the future would love for you to come back for for more games and um you know, thank you so much for, for taking the time to, to talk today. I'm sure people are going to love hearing from you. Uh, where can people find you online? Uh, is there any any links or anything or social handles that you'd like to share so that people can sort of see what you're up to these days? Sure. Um, so right now I've been, like, on a hiatus since, like, COVID, um, basically up in Lake Tahoe just snowboarding, <laughs> um, which is, like, my second love. Um, so I just have a personal account, which is my Instagram, which is a underscore Gotham girl. And that's just like where I share my art and my life and snowboarding and funny videos and whatnot. But, um, yeah, that's basically the only place. And I'm on Twitter too. Um, I believe it's the same handle, but I'm like never on Twitter. So I don't blame you there. (laughs) Oh man. Twitter can get crazy. (laughs) <laughs> yeah i only got it because of zelda honestly oh okay i i see i see well at least you were on the good side <laughs> <laughs> yeah oh man well all right thank you so much and uh, until next time autobots we'll see you later <laughs>